What's up guys, Bearded Jeeper here. Today we're gonna be switching over our tail lights to these LED flush mount tail lights. Let's get it done. All right guys, I wanna give you a quick overview of what we have for all the tools we'll need and everything the kit comes with so you can get these ins installed. This toolkit is quite extensive on what you actually need to install these, so make sure you lay out everything, have everything you need before you get started. That way uh, you don't have to run to the store halfway through the project. First thing you gotta do is remove this factory tail light. Just a couple of screws. All you have to do is remove the two. That's squeaky. Just remove the two screws on that side and then slide it. Slide it to the uh, middle of the Jeep. And then it'll pop right off. Then you're just gonna twist and turn, take the bulbs out here. And this little, your wiring plug harness here, that just pops out of here. And then I'm just gonna unplug this factory harness as well. Sometimes these can be in there pretty tight. Oh, it's in there pretty tight. Now you'll notice there's two raised sections where the factory harness actually mounts. Then you also have this. We're gonna have to cut out all of that. That's basically what we're going for, what it should look like when we're all done. So let's mark it out uh, before we cut it. Make sure we get, you, you don't wanna screw up this cut. tuck these wires actually in here so they don't get sliced up by the angle grinder. Now it is double thick here in a couple of spots so you're just gonna have to be careful cutting along. Clean up this. Give us a uh, line to cut on and the tape will help it so the paint doesn't chip up as much. All right, here goes nothing. Uh, you're not going back from this point. Make sure you're wearing some kind of safety glasses at least. If not, a full face mask like this. Just because I've seen these things blow apart and it's not pretty. So let's get the cut.
cut. All right, now we got a flap disc on here and we'll grind it off smooth. So this is what the hole looks like all cut. Uh, you just cut out these little things, come around here, cut out the bottom, come around here, cut this part off, and uh, that's what it should look like. That's kind of the number one question I had when I was looking at the directions of these. Thankfully, they have good printed out color directions, uh, really easy to follow, so this is what it should look like cut. Now let's move on to the next step. Any of this bare metal that you just cut, that's what you're gonna wanna put some touch-up paint on, some black, whatever. Um, I have this Rust-Oleum hammered that I'm just gonna throw on there quick, just to, it's gonna prevent rust. You're not gonna see it, so it really doesn't matter what color. Um, so let's get that just a little bit sprayed on. Right on the other side, we're gonna cut this side. That way we can be productive. You want to get your conversion plate mounted up here and you want to hold it up with a C-clamp. Make sure it's nice and snug. I use some electrical or some masking tape on here on both sides so it doesn't mar up this at all. And had to eyeball, had my wife come out and help. She's really good at eyeballing things. And we also use the measuring tape to measure Make sure it's the same height going across. Make sure it looks good. And then you mark where all the holes are. So we have uh, six holes, one, two, three, and one, two, three on this side. We're gonna drill those out next using our 1764 drill bit. And once it's all drilled out, we can throw some touch-up paint on and mount the plates. Start off nice and slow. And you want to be careful when drilling through these holes because uh, there is a second layer of metal, at least on this driver's side. And you saw it there probably try to catch a little bit. So it may want to catch and rip the hole. So just be careful and take your time, drill slow. So that's what the plate looks like all mounted up. I think it turned out great. I mean, I mistakenly was off a little when I drilled this screw and this screw, but I mounted all the other bolts up and then I just put the drill bit back through here and it wasn't off by much and I just lined it up and then all the bolts lined right up and tightened right down. Now we just gotta do the other side, and then we'll wire up the lights, get them all installed. Got to mention, there is one longer bolt out of your nuts and bolts here. One long bolt, and that goes in this bottom corner of the driver's side, because you have to go through two sheets. 
your sheet metal is double thick here, so you're gonna have to go through two layers. You have to go through two layers here, but it's not as big a gap as it is down here. It sandwiches them together and it gets a little wider down near the bottom, so make sure you use that long bolt right there in the corner. And on your passenger side, you have to take off this little uh, plastic piece here. It just pops right off. I got a screwdriver underneath it and popped it right off just because your holes come right along the edge of this. And they say you might have to actually grind a little bit off the edge of this to make it fit. So we'll see once we get the other thing. We'll see once we get the other conversion plate installed, see if we need to actually sand this down at all or if it'll just fit right over it. I also noticed it's really tight uh, putting these bolts, threading them into the conversion plate. You almost have to like spin them in. They don't just slide through. So just a, a thing to be aware of, but you thread them in and they'll go right in. passenger side I did run into a little issue um, I was able to solve it but it, it was a tight fit right here where the bolt goes through it you really want it over this way a little bit more if you can help it because this plate is really close and there's not a whole lot of room here but now that that sides all done we got both sides all mounted up now just the wiring you can get these easy plug and play wiring harnesses. Plugs right into your factory uh, wiring harnesses. Then all you have to do is take your little LED light that's your reverse light. You mount it in that hole. You just take this, take this jam nut off, feed it through, put the jam nut back through. And then the only two wires that you have to connect together with butt connectors and heat shrink, you wanna make sure they're, they're nice and solid. Uh, the red wire, the red wire here, on the red wire on the backup light goes to the green wire on the harness, and the black wire goes to the white wire. So once you get that all wired up, then you can just plug your light in and install it. So I'm gonna get these wired up. I'm not gonna install the load resistors because I don't mind uh, a little bit of fast blink. And if it keeps some heat out of there, those load resistors get really hot and I just I just don't mind the, the fast blinker. So the load resistors are really easy to install if you do want to. Um, you take the red wire that's coming off the, the new uh, tail light and you take one of their crimp connectors and you splice it into the load resistor on the one end and then on the other end it comes out and it goes right to the white ground wire coming off the light super easy to do i'm choosing not to do it if you have any questions on it feel free to hit me up in the comments be more than happy to help you out all right let me show you what i got for the wiring setup here we have some heat shrink i put all the way up here so i can slide it down over the connection when i'm done um, i have these neat little butt connectors i haven't tried them yet but i think they'll work well um, they basically, I saw them online and I wanted to give them a shot. They have a soldered connection in the middle. So you slide both wires in and then you just heat the whole thing up. It solders it and it heat shrinks at the same time. For some double insurance, I wanted to put this, uh, I wanted to put the black heat shrink over top of it. So let's get this wired up. And before I put the black heat shrink over, I'm just gonna test out the connection, make sure it actually works. you're gonna pop this ring off off of your light here put this in here and get that all squared away that looks good 
Here's where our friend, the Dawn dish soap, comes into play. Just take a little bit of the Dawn dish soap on your finger. And tuck those wires back in there for a second. You just wanna lube up all in here pretty good. It'll make the light going in there a lot easier. Well, okay, now we're going to take this little piece of paper off, little sticker, install our plug here. Make sure that clips in nice and tight, okay. And wiggle this in here, pressing evenly. Nice. Lights right up. Perfect. There's your fast blink. If you don't mind that, you don't need the load resistors. Ooh, that's bright. Nice and bright. Perfect. One down, now we'll get the other side. The tricks to getting the uh, actual light in here is you want to lube this up really well and then you want to push evenly because this back lip in here is what it sits against. So you got to push it evenly and really, really give it some but press evenly so you're not going to risk uh, hurting the light itself. You don't want to crack that, have to replace that. So just push hard and even and eventually just work it back and forth it'll pop right in all right that's what they look like all installed they're super bright especially when you step on the brakes those reverse lights are crazy let me show you the reverse lights those are just the reverse lights Have to watch the brakes here. That lights up super bright. All right, guys, that's it. That is the pandemic flush mount tail light system, and it turned out awesome. I love the look of it. I've always wanted the flat tail lights, so I'm not gonna smash them off road. Don't have to worry because they're flush mounted in there, and they work really well. They're super bright, especially those little tiny reverse lights. I highly recommend not looking into those when you're trying to uh, install them. They, you'll see spots for a few minutes. They're super bright and they work well. I will give you a full review of these after I've had them on for a few months and so you can get my final opinions on them. This is just the install video. I really liked them. Only ran into a few snags uh, on the passenger side. It was a little bit tight getting in there to get to the bolts and I drilled one of the, the bolt holes uh, wrong on the passenger side, but I was able to fix that pretty easily. It is a little difficult to push those LED, the, the whole light into the housing there when you get it all ready and squared away, but Dawn dish soap is your friend. Uh, you can't do it without it. it. You need it to slide it in. It takes a little struggle, a few cuss words, but you'll get it. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, guys, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. As always, stay bearded, stay jeepin'. I'm out.